It's a cold day in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. We are inside at the Eau Claire Curling Club, site of the 2024 USA Curling U21 Men's and Women's National Championships. Eight men's teams and eight women's teams will be competing for the right to represent the United States at next year's Junior Worlds and Junior B Worlds. We are getting ready for men's draw number four, and there you see the standings going into this draw. Team Senzali pacing the field at 3-0. Brendan Gensel, Hebert all at 2-1. Fitzgerald, Lenoy, and Rose at 1-2, and, and Church at 0-3. Here's the lineups for today's games. On sheet A, Caden Rose taking on Zach Brendan. Sheet B, Caden Bear will play Ryan Church. On sheet C, Mason Gensel taking on Nick Senzali. And our feature game on sheet D, Aiden Fitzgerald taking on Matthew Lenoy. Here you see the teams, again Fitzgerald at one and two, Lenoy at one and two, both looking to get to 500, get into playoff contention. Four team Fitzgerald, skip Aiden Fitzgerald, third Jackson Askew, second Carter Mitchell, lead Jake Ring and coach Evan Workin. And team Lenoy. Skipped by Matthew Lenoy, third Ethan McCumber, second Brody Weichman, and lead Joey Dobbs. Team coached by Chris Lenoy. For this morning game, Tyler George joining you, and I am joined by Connor Kaufman. Connor, thanks for coming in this morning. Yeah, Ty, excited to be here. Should be a good game to watch. Yeah, Ty, excited to be here. Should be a good game we got ahead of us, so. Excited to see these two teams battle it out. I've seen uh, Team Fitzgerald play once this week already. Uh, they played the first draw when everybody's just trying to get used to the conditions, but still played a pretty solid game. Have not seen Team Lenoy yet. Tell me what you know about this squad. Well, I don't know a ton. I believe they're out of Portage, Wisconsin, although some of the members are from North Dakota. Um, outside of that, I haven't seen them play a ton on tour. So we're going to learn a lot about him here in the first couple draws. Oh. First rock right into the back of the four foot four team Lenoy from lead Joey Dobbs. Here is Jake Ring. Starting five. things off for Team Fitzgerald. Third out of five to call on his first shot. So playing the hit this rock. <laughs> Curling across the face, we'll roll towards the wing, but should stick around. And I like the 11-5 call early. You see a lot of teams early in the game. Make sure to keep the weight up, which you still want to do. But I do think it shows that this Fitzgerald team is comfortable throwing that down weight shot, which will really help them later on in the game. This Dobbs is second in this first end. They qualified for this championship event by virtue of the qualifier in Blaine. And as we mentioned, their first game, Team Fitzgerald qualified through points in the junior qualifier event, or all the events, cumulative. They were the last team to get in. They all count for the same here, no matter how you get here. Yeah, the whole point is just to get here. Once you're here, doesn't matter how you got here. Got to win all the games when you're when you're out on the ice this week. Jake Ring plays the hit in the outside of the sheet. Sticks around, so I think we're going to see both teams content to hit at least until there's a rollout. Second for Team Lenoy, Brody Weichman. And a lot of times in these first ends, Connor, we see the hits in the outside of the sheet try to keep the weight solid, take the ice out of it as it's a bit of a guess and could be frosty in the outside of the sheet. Looks as though this one, for that purpose, does 
cross up with a little bit of soft weight and that redstone appears to be off the rings but with the overhead view always tough to tell so maybe a good teaching point there again to take the ice out of it a little bit make sure just in case it is a little sticky out there so you don't have exactly what happened uh, to to Brody happen right there yeah, exactly. You have to make sure to keep the weight up, especially on the wings in the first couple of ends to avoid exactly that, just over curling because you're trying to be a little bit too precise with it sometimes. Carter Mitchell on the all-hair team in this championship. We love the main. Goes to a corner guard there. So apparently that rock is still in the ring, so they were likely trying to split the house with that stone, but still a good corner they can use. And we'll see if Weichmann's able to make the adjustment from the first throw, a little farther out yet. This one looks to be just fine. Does roll out, but makes good contact that time. So likely see Fitzgerald use that corner that they just threw, see if they can put together a multi-point end in the first and get out front. Yeah, it seemed like they wanted to play relatively conservative in this first end, which you see a lot at these championships, just trying to learn the ice a little bit. But with that rollout, you got a chance to go aggressive in the first. And if you can put up a two in the first end of the game, you're really in a good spot moving forward. Five, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, five, six. Line looks very five, good here. Green, green for sure. We've seen rocks, especially on oh, this turn, oh. on this sheet, finish hard going to the wall. Should have no trouble burying. Very well done by Carter. That rock slightly behind the T line. Looks as though. Lenoy's going to chase with the freeze. It's a little aggressive play. Third, Ethan McCumber. Might get onto that all hair team as well. <laughs> yeah, based on them going in with their first track of the game, I was expecting to see potentially a peel here, but if you make this freeze good, you're in a good spot to force right off the bat, which is always nice. Sneaks by the guard. It has enough weight to hold the line, so very nice shot. Start off the game for Ethan. All right, here we go. As you mentioned, Team Lenoy out of Portage, Wisconsin. And for Team Fitzgerald out of Fargo, North Dakota. You'll see a couple of the players on this team throwing with their sliding broom, a corn broom. No surprise with North Dakotans. If you follow curling at all, Jakes. Manitoba and North Dakota, kind of their own planet when it comes Jakes. to curling. They are they are definitely their own their own place. Plus, this Fitzgerald team skipped by Evan Workin, who's also a tuck slider. So, I imagine he's had a hand in at least a little bit of that. Coach Workin, kind enough to grace us with his presence at our charity event in Duluth this past weekend, the House of Hearts, as a celebrity skip. Asked Evan how it went for him afterwards. He said, oh, there's really no way to describe this event until you go there, which is pretty much what we say all the time. But we thank him for his time and were able to raise over $154,000 to feed hungry kids with the event, a record by about forty grand for us. So big, big weekend for House of Hearts and for Project Joy, Chris Plies' family's organization. Throwing that other inside out turn that we haven't really seen anybody throw and looks like they just got a little caught with it being slow. Sometimes early in the game, you haven't thrown a whole lot down the middle yet and right there just got caught out of his hand a little bit. Yeah, that red stone tucking behind that rock on the tee line. Interesting to see if that's shot rock. It looked like it was from the rear view. And now they are drawing to the opposite side looks like. Switching gears and going back to this side. 
So if they are shot, they don't need to move that stone at all. If they're not, then touching it just a couple inches to get shot rock would be ideal. Jackson Askew second of the first end. Pretty precise shot here because like you saw, uh, Fitzgerald said if you roll off too far, you might leave him a Team Lenoia double, which would kind of kill your end. So got to make this one good. Sweepers going for line and for weight. Need to stay on the high side to be shot rock. Looks like that's going to over curl a little bit. Now, Connor, they've been cooking some great burgers, great chicken sandwiches, hot dogs, a whole bunch of stuff in the kitchen here. I think they're making a fresh batch of bacon right now because that smell is coming all the way across the room, and it's Line the most glorious nice. thing you can imagine. I don't know if they're doing specific breakfast food now, too. You may need to investigate, but at the very least, there will be bacon for the burgers and chicken sandwiches because that smell is incredible. Yeah, when we get to our fifth end break, we got five minutes. Might have to mosey on <laughs> over and investigate what's going on over there. I saw the I saw the chef bringing in a bunch of new food this morning All when right. I got to the club. Um, Those burgers are fantastic, by the way, too. I don't know if you had one yet, but really, yeah. really good. Yeah, I had one yesterday. It was exceptional. Little little messy, but sometimes those are the best burgers. This is the portion where it's the local ad for the food here in the curling club too, to get people to come on down and watch some curling and eat some good food too. He's gonna make a nice shot to prevent a big end. Skip, Matthew Lenoye, drawing around the opposite side. Sand back eight here. You'd really love to keep this above the T line. At least you want to be sitting two. And yeah, still gliding on this fast track around the center line. And that's going to go right through the rings. All good. Finding the weight there, Lenoy. Our colleague here in the yeah, booth running about. tech, Rory McCusker, says it's the, the burger's the line? best rink burger he's ever had. And he's been in a lot of them, so that's okay. saying something. I may be making a return voyage for one myself again today. Yeah, you can literally just give it the small so it that. So same two. shot for Team Fitzgerald, trying to wrap around this intern draw. Even if we don't even, even if we Still don't not sure if they need to move that stone to sit two or not, but just nestling in there would be a good spot. Yeah, I think they must really think that that yellow shot, I'd imagine if they thought they were shot that they'd try to come under that yellow guard that's more on the center line and make Lenoy make a tough freeze and potentially give you a three off the bat. Line's nice. Sorry, Jake. 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 It's gotta move, let it come down. Line's good, Jake's. Should turn hard it once it gets itself. across the center now. Whoa, Jake, off. Well, off. Need to hit the brakes. Does touch this yellow stone. Horse butt. So interesting to see now if that moves it enough that they think they're shot, but we'll listen in. Maybe they'll tell us. The players are still unsure, but they think it might have moved it far enough. Yeah, pretty much. But that's rose-colored glasses because that was red. That's calling it, so. <laughs> well, if it was close before, it's just as close now. And, Connor, we mentioned the break point going across the center line. There's really two distinct break points on this ice. The four-foot lines, if you get outside of them, they really run straight besides being a little weight like sensitive. And then the center line turns it over that much harder. But those have been pretty consistent, at least on the sheets that we've had with A and D, along with the wall side, which is consistent for just about any curling club in the world, being straighter coming off of the wall, just by a little bit, not straight side, swing side, but a noticeable amount. Yeah, and I've seen that on the middle sheets as well on the games that we've played. Um, Yep. So you really got to be careful about switching to curl too soon on especially right. your draws and soft weight shots coming outside in. Really digging on this one. Whoa. 
And that's going to wreck the second guard and roll out. So now interesting decisions for Team Fitzgerald. They're really going to have to look at this and see who's second shot. If they think they need to move it, they may try to wrap around there or tick the outside of their own red to move that stone. Otherwise, they do have a draw for two and then measure for three. I'm, I don't mind taking just going the draw and then just... I think you just play the same draw. I think you... You heard him say if the rings are right, that it's them. Sometimes in different ranks, the rings are off by an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, so what you see isn't exactly what's happening. I like the call to draw to the middle here, if they think that it's them. Throwing the draw to the outside with how hard it turns over, you don't have to be off by very much on the line to not be shot rock. Playing it to the middle, it's just a simple draw to the button. But if, it, if you're not sure, there's nothing wrong with playing a draw towards that outside to try to move that stone. And when you got decisions like this, I always go back to, hey, what was our goal before the end started? Sure. If our goal was really hard full for a eight, blank, guys. that's not happening. Full but eight. you would have been really happy scoring a two in this first end. Make the draw. Straight guarantee time, your time. two. If it's Straight. three, that's a bonus. Straight. A little tight it's coming out, and hard. this is turning over hard, early. It Looks hard, like it down. really needs head to go to get this. shot. Harden, you got it, you got it. Oh, oh, oh. It just might have softened the release a little bit to so see I where that ended up on line. Throw. I'll move this one, huh? Yeah. So at least a one for Fitzgerald. May end up throwing the sticks on it for two. Two. All right. well, they've agreed, it is two. Right. So a score of two for Fitzgerald in the first, leading 2-0 after one. Twin Cities Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. Opening two in the first end for Aiden Fitzgerald, leading 2-0 over Matt Unole. A lot of play to the outside of the rings in the first end, which I'm sure Team Fitzgerald was very happy with. Oh, now they'll be going to the forefoot in the center. That's all right, bud. With their first stone. Turn yeah, you don't usually see a lot of play to the wings in the first end, especially at the at the junior level. Usually in the second and third ends, when you start throwing corners and going behind them, you always remind the team, hey, it's going to be slow down the middle. We haven't thrown here. You almost have to do the opposite now in the second end. Hey, it might be slow to the middle because we haven't thrown anything on the outside yet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Curl. 9-0, just really heavy. The hit played again and rolls to the outside. We'll see now, Connor, if they elect to play the delayed corner or if they're just content to hit out again. I would think after the first end and getting down 2-0 that the goal is to throw a corner with the next shot. We'll see what Jake Ring does for Nine. Team Fitzgerald Nine. first. Yep, 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 yep. Hard. Yep. Hard. Yep. Yep, hard. 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 Yeah, a little soft again on the outside of the sheet. That rolls sweet, back towards the center, but will be well behind the T-line, so not a dangerous stone. Normal. You threw nine Still playing the hit again. So conservative start here for Team Lenoy. 
Yeah, and I'll be curious to watch how that strategy evolves as the game goes on, depending on what the scoreboard tells you. Yeah, it's going to roll off again. Maybe a little firm on the hit weight. So Fitzgerald content just to come right back into the forefoot. I know, I know. As soon as I didn't promise. Yeah, with a 2 0 lead, they'll, uh, they'll let Lenoy blink as many ends as they want. So. You're good. A little wider path this time for Team Fitzgerald. And Carter Mitchell settles into the back of the forefoot. Brody Weichmann, second for Team Lenoy, playing the out turn pass again. Whoa, whoa. Curl side always. Curl. This team was fourth Curl. at the U 2024 U18 whoa, Nationals. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So still a very young team. Plenty Good. of time left. 9 7. Good throw. Good throw, buddy. Curling aspiration for the Lenoir team as a whole to win Olympic gold. That's a good one to go with. That's, that's, that's a good end result for your career, I would say. Hard push it, push it, hard. Yeah, do you have any uh, experience in that, in that area? Just once, but I can vouch for it. It's, it's worth a go, yeah. I mean, you, you could say, uh, you know, uh, Duluth Cash Spiel champ. You could say uh, House of Hearts champion, uh, Portage Men's, uh, if they have one of those. I'm assuming they do. But the Olympics isn't bad too. It's a good one to have on the list with the rest of those. List that kind of fourth on that on that resume, I assume. They right? all kind of run together, you know. Yeah. Down. A small thing in there. I like that they mentioned winning Olympic gold. You hear a lot of people when they talk about their curling aspirations say, "I want to go to the Olympics." You hear that a lot. You don't often hear people say, hey, I want to go sure win in Olympics. Small small it's difference close, there, but I like the on, I like the real distinction. Close. It's real close. It's real close. Got to be on. Got to be on. Yeah, there aren't too many oh. tournaments that uh, once you get to the elite level of play where like you're content with anything but first yeah, place. Like I can oh. say if a gun's to my head that a, a medal at the Olympics would have felt pretty good. <laughs> regardless of what color it was. Uh, but, I mean, when you play in the Nationals now, like for these guys playing the Junior Nationals, they want to win the whole thing. You get to the World Juniors, you want to win the whole thing. Getting on the podium would be great, but, you know, the, yep. everybody yep. wants to stand on top of the podium, and that's the yep. correct goal to have. The yep. important thing when you have that Hard. as your ultimate goal Hard. is to have small Whoa, goals that lead it, to it. it. You know, I've said a, a lot of times that the sport way. of curling is... It's a ladder, you know, it's small yeah. steps all the time. Top Every end. win is to get to another game. So if you do it in those small goals where if, like for instance with the juniors here, if you played in it the previous year, maybe your next year your goal is to get in the playoffs and maybe the next year is to get on the podium. But you're making the goals in small increments so you're feeling like you're having success as a team. And then that end one that's at the top of that ladder that's a ways off can be Olympic gold. Just make sure that you have those small goals to get you there first, and the road doesn't seem quite as long. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, uh, old coach of mine, John Benton, coached me for a couple of years ago. Well, he's listening to you right now, so whatever you say. <laughs> I'll, I'll be nice, I promise. <laughs> but uh, his big thing was always the process. You always have your process goals. How do we go right. about getting ready to play? How do we prepare to play good to curling games. Yep. And if you go through the correct Hard. process and you stick with what you yes. know works, the results will take care of themselves. Is it a hair more ever? John, an oh, Olympian yeah. in, Not that. in his own right. He's well versed in the subject and very well versed in tech and streaming for these championship events, which is very helpful as we speak. Oh, oh. Close, close. close, no. 
Yeah, I know that everybody was quite happy with the job Curling Stadium's done the last couple years. Letting everyone see all the sheets for every national championship has been huge. Ethan McCumber playing the open hit again. Would like to roll towards that corner guard if they can. Another fun fact about their squad. So Joey won the 2023 state championship by beating Matthew and Brody in the semi and then beating Ethan in the final. <laughs> I know, but like so that rivalry within the team, you want to beat your teammates more than anybody else, no question. Always good to have some nice, friendly competition within the team. I'm sure that never gets mentioned in any team meetings. Now one, one more fact I have to get in here from Team Lenoy, and we'll get to some facts about Team Fitzgerald as well. Joey has 16 guinea pigs. 16. 16 is the number. I don't think that's a typo. I'm pretty sure this is a fact. I would assume if you have 16, there's a good chance you'll have more shortly after, too. But that's a that's quite the number. That's a pet shop right there. Yeah, I can't say I've ever had any Strange. guinea pigs. I've had a couple myself. They're fun. Yeah? Yeah. I've been around a few of them. I did not have 16. Yeah, that uh, feels like that would take up a lot of space. <laughs> as much roll as you can get. As much roll as you can get. Go, 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 I don't know go, go, exactly go. how much space that's they need, throw, but... Let's just throw outside in. We don't need to go for anything crazy. Wouldn't mind a hair more just to be on the safe side. Thought with uh, Fitzgerald nosing that corner and leaving that rock as a corner guard out there, Lenoy would have a chance to build a two for themselves in this end. No one seemed to be able to quite get behind that corner guard all end long, so looks like Lenoy is going to be content with a blank, which was kind of their goal at the beginning of the end and we'll see how they're going to play in the third. Nine five. No, curl. Curl. Whoa. Curl. Curl. Here is Skip. Curl. Matt Lenoy. Roll. Roll. Trying to get this roll over towards the corner again. A long ways to go, but... Right. Yep. Rolls to the top of the eight foot. So now if your team That's control there. Fitzgerald, yeah. you can take a little aggressive run at now this it's roll. Now it's, it's always good to make your opponent make something on their last with a possible blank attempt. Yeah. But if you're going to have a good run at the roll, this is the shot to yep. do it on. That was like 10 yeah, a little surprised that Lenoy didn't just elect to hit and stay out there and just play for his blank. Tried to roll behind the corner, couldn't quite get there. We'll see how good Fitzgerald can make this one. Last night, if you were watching in the Abers and Zolly game, in the first end, Caden Abair made a great draw to a corner and caught about a quarter of the back 12 foot to sit buried in. Yeah, that was an incredible shot. Forced great West force. to, had no shot, had to just draw the eight foot. Hard, Carter, hard. Hard, Carter. Hard. Oh, you're fine. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's okay. That will be right on the nose, so. Should be a blank oh, attempt okay, here for Team Lenoy. We're never hitting that one, are we? Okay. Shouldn't do a whole lot on this line. It's right close to where we see the break point right between the two, so should get a little bit of finish, but not much. Yeah, the only worry I'd have is you just got to be a little careful. If you're just a little too positive, which we see with a lot of these junior teams now throwing that positive release with extra rotation, if you get it just outside that four-foot line because you're right on the edge, it might just run on you. So final stone of the second end. Matthew Lenoy looking for his blank. Yep. Throwing peel weight. Well, yep, release yep. looked pretty clean. That's a good throw there from Lenoy. And they do get their blank. So we'll move on to the third end with Fitzgerald still with the 2-0 lead. 
And in here with the second end break, Steve's Curling Supplies. America's number one curling equipment supplier for over 50 years. It's proud to support USA Curling. No matter your skill level or budget, they have all of the top products from the most popular brands in the sport. Right now, you can save $10 on any purchase of $100 or more when you use the code USACurling10 at checkout. Visit us at stevescurling.com for all your curling needs. So a blank in the second for Team Lenoy. They trail 2-0 after two ends of play. This fourth draw for the U21 men at the USA Curling U21 Men's National Championship. Tyler George joined by Connor Kaufman. And Connor, one of the uh, perks of coming into the booth here is that you get to talk about your own team as you're coaching a team here this week on the women's side. So tell us a little bit about your squad. Yeah, so I'm coaching Team Shield this week, obviously with Miranda Shields skipping, having won the last two junior nationals. But we got a, some really good experience behind her as well. Bella and uh, May Hagenbaugh throwing third and lead, respectively. They've won the mixed nationals and gone to Worlds a few times with Jed Brundage and Cam Rittenauer. And then at second, we got Riley Kraft, who's obviously played for a number of years out of Bismarck, North Dakota. So. Normal control. What do you like? Okay. And of course, Miranda Shield finishing in the, the force. Come on final four in our women's championship this year as well. Some bright future for her. Got to see a bunch of her Ten games five. throughout the season. Coached by my buddy Mike Moore, who should be getting out here, I believe, push, tomorrow. Push. Push, hard. Hard push. Might expect hard to see push. Mike in the booth a little bit too. And for the first oh, time, oh. my good buddy. <laughs> See that corner guard slide into the ring for Team Lenoy and hit and stick made by Jake Ring, so now sitting two. Lenoy uh, trying to get a little offense going there, but that rock's sliding in, so not a great setup to try to get offensive. So maybe they can get a, a roll out or a freeze attempt or something to find a two this end for now content to hit and roll to the middle. Yeah, with it being the third, I imagine the plan is not to go super crazy for the offense. You don't need to force a two in an odd end. In the fourth, we might see him play a little more aggressive for that two, but right now I think they'd be content. The corner guard slipped in. We'll call it a blank, and we'll move on to the fourth. That rock does hang around in the outside 12s. I said normal here. Nose will be a hair off. A hit attempt for Carter Mitchell. Oh. Out turn hit attempt for Carter. Hard, we gotta stick this around. Hard, hard, you gotta get to nose. Carter and Jake hard, going Jake, to the hard. University of North Dakota in the fall. Hard, it's gotta get to nose. Oh. It does just roll off. Carter was a state champion in football last year as well. You can see the strong looking kid. I think you could stick him anywhere on the football field. That'd be a good position for him. Agreed. Never played football. Was not one of my one of my sports growing up. I did not have the build for that. I would have been broken in half, I think, <laughs> shortly into the first quarter of a game. But 
I had uh, I probably had the build for it, especially around the middle, but uh, not exactly the head for it. I didn't like to get hit. Only sibling growing up. I didn't uh, roughhouse very much, so don't think that would have worked out very well. It's just this team, Team Fitzgerald, has been together since they're 10 years old. Nerd clusters are their favorite fifth end break snack. <laughs> Good time to get some more facts in with the team's trading hits. One of my favorites, and I mentioned this uh, in the first game we had for them too, that Coach Evan Workin was their nanny before he became their coach. <laughs> so he's now Mr. Nanny to me. <laughs> Just like the Hulk Hogan yeah, movie. Yeah. You didn't even like throw the hair out and it, it An outturn hit attempt again, that will stick around. Skip Aiden Fitzgerald will be attending the U University of Minnesota. Control here. Or is already, I believe. I feel like you end up with a lot of curlers from pretty much everywhere ending up at the University of Minnesota. Whoa, easy, whoa. Whoa. It's, it's a good place to go if you want to take Hard curling push. seriously with a half a dozen curling Hard clubs push. in the Minneapolis-St. Paul push metro it. area. Hard push it. And the USA Curling and National Training Center. That hit and roll out there from Team Fitzgerald. Third Jackson Askew still in high school. Aiden and Jackson won state in soccer. So there's a lot of talented athletes outside of the sport of curling on this team too. Jake plays baseball and basketball. And the squad, if we are focusing back on curling, won silver in the U18s last year. And high school state this year. So a team accustomed to winning in all kinds of sports and being in finals, being on the podium. So expect that they'll play a strong rest of this week. I can't really argue with the strategy from Team Fitzgerald right now. I mean, with the two-point lead, the tendency for more inexperienced teams is if your opponent is trading hits and you feel like you may have an advantage over them, then you want to push the action, but you don't want to give your opponent an opportunity by doing it. So don't throw a guard just to throw a guard. You have the two-point lead. There's no rocks in play. Starting this end off, if you told Team Fitzgerald they get to hit out, you have to be happy with that. Agreed. I think it'll be interesting after this end likely results in a blank what the fourth end's going to look like, how they decide to go about it, because obviously they have the two-point lead, but you know that Team Lenoy is going to be pushing harder for their two in the fourth end. So it'll be interesting to see if Team Fitzgerald decides, hey, we're fine playing open how we have been and just trying to force that way, or if they want to push the action a little bit, throw a center guard that they haven't thrown yet and really put Lenoy in a tough spot, make them make some decisions. Ethan McCumber with the hit and roll out. Another free look for Team Fitzgerald with the draw. And you may remember Aiden throwing this exact same draw in the first and coming up short. So getting another look at it. Just trying to draw as close to the button as possible and, and a good decision on the location for the draw. Trying to give your opponent as long a roll out as possible for the blank. So you might as well throw your first one there. And then if you can trade hits for the nose, that'll give the longest roll out possible for Lenoy on their last. And every skip that I have ever met loves a free draw early in the game. Oh, Get absolutely. that T-line weight dialed. Jakes! Jakes! Can't be down. Straight! Straight! Aiden Fitzgerald with what we would call the Manitoba tuck. But I wouldn't be opposed to calling it a North Dakota tuck either. Yep. That's a good that one executed good well. Thanks. So that's a good one for Fitzgerald just to feel like, okay, I found that weight now. I'm sure he's not happy about the one in the first for the extra point. But that's perfectly thrown there. He wants to keep that one in his pocket for the rest of the game. You got it. 
Stein five ten. Yep. Skip Matthew Lenoy. Her nine five the call, just looking for normal hit. Obviously, you'd like to roll as far to the wings as you could to make your blank on your last easier, but main thing is you want to stick around with your shooter here. Yep. Head down, head down. For any roll. Whoa. Here, 10 on the call. So Fitzgerald would be very happy just to hit this right on the nose. This game motoring along already at the close of the third end. So both teams should have some leeway with time going forward, playing at a good pace and trading hits. Yeah, talk about playing with uh, with pace. A couple draws ago when Team Shia was playing on sheet D, Johnson was playing N Berg on C, and they blanked like three ends and ended up being an end and a half ahead of us. I'm always a proponent of playing with pace. And you know, once you talk or start to over talk, take too much time. The game can kind of get a little stunted and your execution might slip a little bit. And it's not, you, you don't want to say it in terms of playing fast or quick. It's more with pace. Is once you start to think fast, then you rush. But really it's just about being in the correct positions and when it's your turn to shoot, you know, getting into the hack, cleaning the stone, still go through your normal routines. Don't change anything no. with that. No. So final stone. Third end looking for the blank, and this one flared a little bit from Lenoy. And that's going to go by, so they play the end for the blank, but can't execute the last one. Fitzgerald gets the steal and leads 3-0 after three ends of play. And in this third end break, we'd like to talk to you about Warm Room Hero. They're more than just software. They're curlers dedicated to building long-term relationships with your club. Warm Room Hero provides continuous support to ensure your website exceeds your members' expectations. Check out Warm Room Hero today at curling.club. That's Warm Room Hero at curling.club. Early look at the other games in this morning draw on sheet A, Caden Rose leading 2-0 over Zach Brendan in the second. Caden Ebear and Ryan Church, 0-0 on sheet C. Mason Gensel and Nick Senzali tied 2-2 in the third. Of course, our feature game, Aiden Fitzgerald leading 3-0 over Matthew Illinois. Line's fine. Straight side. So it looks as though Team Lenoy now going to a corner guard. Line's start fine. out this third end. Gotta finish it, actually. Nice start from Jake Rink for Team Fitzgerald right to the top of the forefoot. Real good. Yeah, and for Team Lenoy, it's not panic mode yet, right? Here. Being down three never feels good, but especially with these long 10-end games, you got a lot not of time much. to come back. 
So throw the corner, go for your soft two, but if it doesn't shape up early, it's okay to come into the middle and, hey, we're just going to blanket try again in the next. Yeah, we saw a similar situation yesterday in the Bear senzali game where Senzali was up 4-0. In the first half of the game, and Team A Bear uh, did what we call curling math, where they kept getting two, giving one, giving two, getting one, or excuse me, getting two, giving one. That's a great rock, Jake. And eventually, as long as you have that many ends left in the game that you can do that, you you have a chance to win. And they ended up tied coming home, an eyelash away from being ahead going to the last end, outside of a great in-off shot by Wes Wendling in the ninth. But as you said, Connor, as long as there's a lot of game left, you, you don't panic because of the scoreboard. And all you're looking to do this end is get a two. You get two, you're back down by one point after four ends of play with a lot of game left. So just small goals again. Find a two, get yourself back in this game. Yeah, you saw Team Lenoy talking about throwing another corner on the other side. I like that they went to this call instead of going under their corner. Yeah, that rock was touching the center line, so that's going to go back to where it was. The shooter will go out of play with the, the no tick zone rule. First five shots at the end, that stone has to go back to the center line if it's removed from touching the center line. Big opportunity here for Team Fitzgerald. If they can sink a good one around here and sit two buried, Lenoy is definitely going to be chasing. I don't even know if you are. Whoa. Four. Four, five. Five. Push, yeah, push, push. Five. Four. Push. Yep, yeah, hard. Line's good now. Push. You hear the weight calls all the way down the sheet. Good communication from Team Fitzgerald. That's 10. You'd be hard. We've said so many times. The last thing you want to hear as a skip is silence from your sweepers. Any information they can give you, don't be afraid to be wrong. Just keep saying something. Try to give as much information as possible. And this team having played together since they're 10 years old, I'm sure very familiar with each other communication wise as well. And I suppose we'll give a little cap tip to Coach Workin for, I'm sure coaching up that communication. That's never been a problem with him either. Yeah, communication with, with your sweepers and your sweepers telling your skip what's going on, even if they're wrong, is so huge. I actually helped uh, teach at a sweeping clinic in Chaska a couple weeks ago with the TCCA and Jason Pereira, and one of the main things we were harping on, outside of just technique and sweeping in front of the stone, was, hey, tell your skip what you think. I don't care if you call it for a two and it's actually back line. Just start saying and get into the habit of saying where you think the rock is. As you watch more rocks and walk with more rocks, you're going to get better at dialing in that number and where the rock's going to end up actually stopping. For those watching that may be unfamiliar with the, the weight systems that they're using, you're hearing four, five numbers like that. High guard would be a one. And back 12 would be a 10. So anything in between, you just go in scales. One, two, three would be the three guards, high, mid, tight. And then you can do the math on the scale in the house. So out turn hit. Trying to open things up for Team Lenoy. Throw on the way from second Brody Weichman. Really good. Well, nice makes the double and keeps the shooter around. So some guards in play. Thank you, Tyler George. Let's make this. Not sure why I got a call out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure that one. Yeah, really well made shot. That's got to be pretty close. I mean, they can't hear me <laughs> as far as I know. <laughs> uh, 
just paying homage to your to your double peel I, ability. You know, I, 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 I think what it was is uh, he's, he's thanking me for the compliment on the shot, knowing he made the double. <laughs> uh, he just he just knows. That's just pretty knows good. That's a, that's a great shot there, Brody. Well done. You deserve the props for that one. How much do you have? You like this? Don't know if that comment made the error or not because it was post shot, but <laughs> Brody, after making that double, said thank control. you, Tyler George. <laughs> just aware of the fact that he's going to get the thumbs up from the booth for a great shot. <laughs> That's good stuff. Uh, slid a little deep there for Team Fitzgerald, so now yep. Ethan McCumber's yep. got a chance to put Lenoy back in this end by hitting and rolling under the corner guard. Whoa, whoa, curl, 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 curl. Yeah, this over curling a little bit. Roll it on. Hoping they can spill the shooter onto the rings. Looks like it should. That's okay. It actually spins back a little bit too. I got like this. Okay. So still not a bad setup for Lenoy to try to find a two. Okay. Middle's wide open. A couple of corner guards to use. Normal. An important shot here for Team Fitzgerald. Third Jackson Askew. Yeah, they called for the hit and roll behind the corner guard. Yep. Whoa. I'm wondering whoa, if it whoa, might whoa. be at all Easy. better to roll big whoa, and push. not stay behind that whoa. corner. Push, push, push. Yeah, it gets a little Burn. tight to the guard to roll Burn. farther, Burn. so I think they're just going to play it a little conservatively and make sure Is of the in? hit. Yeah. That's Is just fine. Yeah. It sounds as though that one is biting on the outside 12s too. So Lenoy playing the hit and roll. Trying to get something under a guard. Yep. yep. Ethan McCumber. Whoa, curl. Curl. Now curl going with plan guard, B, guard, trying to go way. under the other guard. Roll, roll. Ah. Ends up right on the nose. Under, yeah. Yeah, it looks like he might have just got it started a little bit and just yeah. didn't get to plan B quite quite quick enough to get under that red. Yeah. Not unusual for some of the players. We have a lot of personalities in this sport. <laughs> to talk to us in the booth during the game through the mics when they know that we're we're calling it. That's the first time this week in this tournament. Men's and women's mixed doubles a little more prevalent. More familiarity, I think. <laughs> yeah, that, that I love that. That was great. That was funny. That could be that could be part of it. I know I I always try to try to give one or two shout outs to whoever's in the booth when I'm on a mic. Whoa! Push! And we do forget this can be fun. It is a game. As long as you're out there and you're on the stream and got a bunch of people watching you play, which doesn't happen a lot, I'm sure, for teams playing in this tournament. Have some fun with it. Enjoy the ride. And that goes for really any level of the sport, too. That's the more you enjoy the process and the stage that you're on and soak it in, it keeps you relaxed. You know, our team... We preached all the time. We're at our best when we, and then we stop. You know, take a look around and, yeah. and enjoy the, the that stage and the crowd. You know, and you know, soak it all up. Pretty Let people much, see your personalities. So, we'll see. so good to see these these teams doing that as well. Exactly. You don't want to you don't want to ignore the situation and pretend like there's not people watching and pretend like you don't have fans behind the glass or at home. And I know for me, I always feel like I play better when I know, hey, there's some eyes on. All right, I wanna I wanna show up and kinda perform a little bit with, with people watching. So it can be fun being on that yep. stage, being on a mic. Careful. It's an enjoyable yep. experience. Yep. Go. It's another try at a hit and roll now. Matthew Lenoy trying to bring a Whoa. two into play if they can roll under the corner. It doesn't quite get there. Still will be an open hit for Fitzgerald. Kicked out light, I had to get 
Yeah, biggest thing for Fitzgerald is sticking around here. That if you can roll under the corner, great, make your opponent draw. Don't know that Lenoy has thrown a draw yet. But sticking around is big because you take the blank out of play. Your worst case would be a force with that redstone. They believe biting, even though what the overhead view doesn't look like it. But uh, Team Fitzgerald had said that rock was in earlier. They believed that they were shot on the measurement, and they were correct on that. So we're going to go with their calls until they steer us wrong. Close. Whoa. Aiden Fitzgerald's final Close. stone in the fourth. Whoa. Push. Push. Should take a turn Push. now Push. once it gets across center. Push. You got it. Push. Hard. Push. 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 Really close on the roll. Jeez. I thought that was. I think it's a couple inches of roll, so it's a bit of a teaser for Lenoy if he wants to hit. He's going to have to play it inside out. With control. And yeah. Connor, this is that line we talked no, about too, all. right on the center line or just inside of it, so you want to make sure you, like you let this one go clean. If you're a little bit out on this line, it may hang and take its time going. Yeah, and you just watched Aiden Fitzgerald's on that line really take its time getting out. It really hung, and he didn't throw a ton of weight at it, so if you throw this one pure, it should run for a while. So got to be a little careful on a tricky spot. like a pretty good throw out of hands. Still needs to turn. Let's see if that sticks around. If it rolls out, you heard we may get a biter stick on it. So we think that yellow was out, but the red they're probably going to measure. To yeah, go ahead and move those. One. And they agree without having to measure. It is a one. So thanks to Team Fitzgerald for letting us know that stone was in earlier <laughs> in the end. They do get the steal. They now lead 4-0 after four ends of play. Another steal for Team Fitzgerald in the fourth. Now leading 4-0 on Team Lenoy after four ends of play. Connor, it's been a lot of hit and sticks sure. or trading hits over the first four ends of the game. But team Lenoy did try to get some guards up and yep. put some offense together, but probably going to have to start to get a little more aggressive now as still not in panic mode, but a four point deficit, six ends to play. Need to get something going pretty soon. Yeah, exactly, like you said, it's still not panic mode, right? You have six ends of curling. We talk about that curling math. You take two, force one, take two, force one. You're still in an okay spot, but you do have to kind of get it rolling. You gotta 
push in this end a little bit, maybe a little more than you'd like, and go after that too. You're afforded a pretty good opportunity to throw that corner guard for free with Fitzgerald sliding into the back 12 foot there. Not a rock you're overly concerned about right now. They mop. Yeah, they did. Oh, I'm tripping. Yeah, as you said, that stone doesn't pose much of a threat. Even if that rock was in the top of the forefoot, I'm I don't think it changes what, what you're doing here, but it always helps for setting up your end. You, you don't have to worry about moving that stone. If anything, it helps you. It's something that could play into a jam or a freeze later in the end without being any danger. Exactly, it's just one more rock that you don't have to think about. Hard, hard push, hard push. Every draw from... Really Jake Ring looks like it's stopping short, so now you have a couple guards to use already. Top it. Close. Joey Dobbs, his second here in the fifth. Straight. 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 Whoa. Whoa. Line's Curl. good. Curl. Uh, it's got to curl a lot, actually. Always curl. Now crossing center, so they'll try to finish if they can, but this rock's still gliding. Hoping that it still has paint, but looks like that's going to go through. And, and that's something, Connor, even with the amount that it curls going to the outside, especially go. for shots that just this way in case stay on the outside of the center line before they cross at the beginning of the shot, our national ice, that line is the fastest track on the sheet pretty much every pretty single good. nationals that we play in. Seven, no, no, not yet. Yeah, you have to be really whoa, 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 whoa. careful and very deliberate, Nine. I think is, the, is a good word, about when and how you're sweeping rocks coming down that not path. Yet, oh. If you're gonna, no, no, if you're gonna sweep, you need to oh. make sure yeah, push, push, that push. it has to be swift. Yeah, push, yeah, push, yeah, push, yeah, push hard push. It's not bad. That rock settles yeah. into the back of the forefoot. Here. So going under the corner. Wait through close. Brody Weichman. I think we're back. Looking for some more close. congratulations on a made shot. At a tight line here. Sweeper's trying to get by. Just hairs that corner guard and spins into the forefoot. That rock will be wide open. Yeah, look just a little, little light on rotations as opposed to Josh Dobbs on the first. And so that one curled a little bit sooner. Just weren't quite expecting that, I don't think. 10-5, yep. Yep, hard. 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 Are you a football guy, hard. Connor? I like to watch. I mean, really always pay attention to what my hard. Seattle Seahawks are doing, hard. even though they've been hard. pissing hard. me off the last couple of years. <laughs> but Well, I ask uh, because I uh, referred to Joey Dobbs as Josh Dobbs, and that's an NFL quarterback. <laughs> so I wanted to, to give you the out on that one, too. I mean, I, com I compare the two as athletes, of course, Chris. Joey and Josh both, so they may remind you of Chris each other. But third. Exactly. Josh I was a Minnesota Viking for a short period of time as well. Joey was not, maybe in the future. You like hack? Just shows you have a sports mind, Connor. That's that's what it is. <laughs> there we go. That for anyone listening, that's that's all it was. That's an easy one to make the mistake on, too. Yeah, there you go. It was it was too fun to not <laughs> mention too. Yes. No, that's that's fair. Joey, Joey Dobbs. Joey on the sweep here, <laughs> trying to get this one by. That's fine. It does just hair that guard again? That corner guard getting moved back and forth. No, well, we're one, two, so just throw the draw. And if you're heavy, you're Gerald's still it, sitting two. Is it this way? 
Yeah. Okay. Nah, I like this. I think it can be a little curlier this way, coming, going this way anyways. I like the call here that I'm not sure. this is a shot you play every bit as much because it's what your opponent wants to do as what you need to do. So take this four foot position on, away with the come around draw. Three. You can really kind of put a hammer lock on this oh, end okay. with another counter Three, around to the four foot. Knife! Play this. Play this. Knife! Push, yep. You heard him mention the side's a little Push, curlier. Yep. Trying to use that to get to this yellow with a little bit extra weight. We it does it. curl more on that side, but it's weight sensitive still. So a couple feet extra weight, and that will glide. So Lenoy now with a chance to get in first on that line. They could go either way. You could play the in-turn draw or the out-turn with backing or a freeze on the opposite side. But you're going under your own guard playing this side as well. So I don't think it really, I don't think there's a right or wrong for this one. Just really want to make whichever one you play. That is true. You got a little backing, like you said, on the outturn, but if you use the backing, then you're a little bit deeper than you'd like to be. Straight. Yeah, trying to hold the line to get a piece of that red. And that track, I think, just a little bit outside of where the that line is where it turns over, so it's probably a little faster than the draw to the button path, too, and both there. teams are getting caught on that. I know it now. Yeah, now with this third rock down the path, you got to be really careful because you've seen a couple go deep. Your tendency is going to be, hey, I'm just going to make sure to not leave it deep. And like you said, in that path, when it starts to break, it's going to go. So if you're good. a little light, you might Straight curl always. a hey. lot more than you Straight. think. Straight. Straight. All right, gotta go. This Hard. one turning Straight. quite a bit more. Still by right now. Sweeper's trying to hold it. Doesn't look like the weight's there on this one, so maybe babied it a little bit in thinking about the line, too. So a little overcorrection. And now with the way these are lined up, that out turn looks like a much better path to come in. This is a way more precise shot playing the in turn. When you have to get out far enough that you got to be a little bit cautious is it gonna run is it gonna break early it's it's tough to know when you get out this wide if you haven't thrown out here much Close, Ethan McCumber Straight. going a little out Straight. in the wings trying to get around this red guard this one needs to go for weight as well hard for weight hard for weight gotta be here got it really good line Ends up stopping just top eight foot. Yep. Looks as though Red's still sitting too. Still the same draw, right? You can't really wire a double over here, can you? I think it's there. I think what? it's always here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 You can tuck this way. You have to make sure to get it here. Yeah. And now this is the only way in, really, outside you know of a out here. difficult more? hit and roll. Yeah for Team Lenoise, so Fitzgerald taking that path away first and can really take control of this end and this game with a good draw here. Most definitely. You heard him say they were a little bit worried about the double that Lenoy has. As it sits right now, it would be a double for four, so they want to make sure they get in to at least sit three off this. But if you miss light, as long as you're open and you can tap it on your next, you're not in a terrible spot. Out turn, come around draw for Aiden Fitzgerald. Carters. 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 Hard it has to be here. Hard. Should come down Hard. nice on this line now. Hard it has to be there, guys. Just no matter come how on. far they can come go. On. Whoa, 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 whoa. Push, but wisely push, push. No. letting it stop and trying to take some of that draw path away as they saw it wasn't going to get there. I think, I think you got to groom me where I got to hit it. Opportunity time here, though, for Team Lenoy. 
Yeah, this is really flat to play this double, so you got to throw it hard to make it. Even just rolling in for shot rock would be a good result, but with all those other yellows in the house, your chance to get back in this game would be to clear both. The problem, though, Connor, is if you make this with the roll, there really isn't another way in. So you may end up having to play a, a double run of some kind. I think that red-yellow, possibly, if it's there on your last shot, if it's not taken away by Fitzgerald, to try to make all those other yellows count. Agreed. Don't think he has much else here, though. So big nope. shot in the fifth Girl. end here. Whoa. Girl. And does roll in. Shot rock. Very well done. Yeah, hit it exactly where he needed to to make the double. As you heard him say himself, I throw it harder. Could make that double. For Team Fitzgerald here now, I think you're just trying to make sure you don't give up a three or more. If you give... Huh? Lenoy, a, a right shot now. for two, which he doesn't red, red. have what? much. Red, red. Yeah. yeah. He still has this, so down. He could probably get there at heck. I think he's going to put it here. Better down. And if you're. Dude, okay. give same ice. Okay, war. What? Yeah. But I don't think you can either give him the. You throw a guard way out there, you give him the run, or you give him the half later. Or you tuck it in more and give him the hack with yourself. So this is one now where the vast majority of the time when teams say, well, we don't want to give him this by playing this shot, I say, well, don't worry about the miss. Just make the shot you're playing. This is one you do need to be careful on because I'm not sure they can dig that rock out. You have to get really close to the guard with through the house weight maybe. Pure like hack to get that rock out. Not so having this one hang would be your worst case scenario and giving them a shot at a double. Now if you get around the guard and you come in, then it's a great shot. Yeah, I think if it's me on this, the only shot Lenoy has, like you said, is that just through the house weight with the outturn. I'm probably throwing a one or a two guard out there and saying, hey, if I hog it, I hog it. Just don't go deep and give him any sort of double for four. Sure. Two for three. Two for three. Straight still. Hard. This is over curling now, too. Hard. So it's a matter if they can bounce it off to guard that up. Doesn't look like it. So we'll see if they give that a go. Throwing just... Heavy draw through the house somewhere in there and move that as far as they can. Is a possible tap for two? Or is middle too tight? You could tap red yellow for a second point. Or even take a run at the red yellow and slash it in. And it doesn't look like that angle's there with the yellow being a hair higher. So this is one, Connor, where you. Foot. You don't want to have to sweep it to early. make it. You want this rock walking down. Because so a good soft drive. release yeah. and let it walk sideways at the end. If you're throwing it tight to the I guard out of hand there. and oh, sweeping to hold the line, fine. you're not going to get as much finish. Just go a little straighter. So as counterintuitive as it sounds, you want to give yourself room starting out and then sweep to finish so you can get to as much of that redstone as you can. Yeah, you want this coming in on as much of an angle as you can manage. So final stone, fourth end. Matthew Lenoy, very precise tap opportunity. Curl side, curl side, whoa. Needs to curl a long ways still now. And that's just gonna stay there. So the sweep they really didn't need ends up just being a single, but they're on the board now. Score four to one at the break. The fifth end break means we're halfway through and it's time for the broom fitters break.
Broomfitters.com is the place for good curling gear and fast shipping on everything curling. For a limited time, take 10% off your first order with the code USA. Visit Broomfitters.com.
four through five ends in our feature game here. The 2024 U21 Men's National Championship event. Tyler George here with Connor Kaufman. We take a look at scores around the other sheets. Caden Rose and Zach Brendan tied at three on sheet A. Caden A. Bear up 2-1 on Ryan Church in the fifth on sheet B. On sheet C, Nick Senzali leading Mason Gensel 4-3 at the break. And again, our feature game, Aiden Fitzgerald leading 4-1 with Hammer. Playing the sixth end against Matthew Lenoy. Yep. Key back key. Just clean. Whoa, whoa, just, whoa. Connor, you All see right. that first stone stopping just short of the rings. Oh, easy. Not go in, and now oh, Team Fitzgerald you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. throwing whoa. to the wing. Good throw, this one coast in the back house. John Landsteiner, it's always faster after the break. Nice. Good spot. Sophomore. So neither team having an issue with the speed after the mop. There you see the lead for Team Lenoy. Joey Dobbs. Playing the intern draw. Looks like they're coming into the rings with this one. Lenoy looking to looking to generate some offense, I imagine, in this end. If they get a force, they're not going to be too sad about it. But being down three in the even ends, you'd love to get at least one point on the board, get this uh, scoreboard a little bit closer together. Nice pair there to start the end by Dobbs. And now the lead for T. Fitzgerald. Jake Ring trying to follow that stone. Got to say hi to another Olympic legend in the building, a national champion that's here for a couple draws. Jeff Isaacson hanging out for a couple games. Had a quick chat at the break and offered a spot later today in the booth to Jeff. And he politely declined. <laughs> a little concerned about what he'd say in the booth. I, I didn't disagree with his analysis on that. <laughs> but great of Jeff to stop over and driving in from the Twin Cities area to watch a few games here. The Junior Nationals, we hope more of you do. We've had some great crowds in the building so far this week. Oh, it's always oh, curl. Good. And always good to see the, the new yeah, young please. talent, Connor. And for those of us that spend a lot of our time in the men's and the women's circuit, you know, we've seen West Wendling, we've seen... 13-3. Uh, our, our junior women's champions as well. Team Shield, Miranda Shield. Tom, take a breath. But haven't seen a lot of these teams play. And good to see the depth of the field, the good young talent we have coming up in the United States. And some players that we know we'll need to keep an eye out for going forward. Most definitely, and to, and to that point, I aged out of juniors two years ago now. And I truly believe that the field at the top end is a you little better than we were there, when I edged out. Right and I think the big like difference that you see now is the bottom of the field, I'll the depth curve. of the field on both the men's and the women's side. We're a lot deeper. We have a lot of these young kids coming up, and they're really good curlers that are up and coming. So that'll be nice because I think with some young talent coming up, we have plans to be good in the next yep. five yep. to 10 years, go. yep. as well as hard, that go. helps yep. push our Keep people that are there hard. right now, hard. like a West Wendling, like a Miranda whoa. Shield that have won whoa. this event before. Whoa. It pushes them to continuously be better and involve, because if they don't, they got seven teams behind them that are pushing to take over. I think that gives us a lot of options. That Peel opens things up there by Carter Mitchell. And, and Connor, that's really a testament to the clubs at the grassroots level because these teams are ones that have been taught and brought up within their clubs and a lot of them play with people from their own clubs too. Where but I, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, the way that USA Curling has gotten more involved in that and they're more interested in the grassroots game and, and the club level stuff within the last few years too. And whoa, I think that's whoa, something we lost for a little yep, while yep, yep. and we're yep, going in the right straight, direction straight. with that. But you really tip your That's cap fine. to That's fine. club members and clubs across the country 
with grooming these kids and getting them ready to play in national level events where they can now start to work with more experienced coaches and playing in higher competitive events, men's and women's events even. But as you said, there's, there's a lot of young talent that I've seen in some of the junior camps that I've worked with too that are now playing in nationals. And that continues going forward. That's, that's only going to help our depth of talent and push the top teams too when you have other teams that are chasing you. Hard, 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 Jake, hard. You gotta Agreed, go. and to that point, I think we've hard, seen a big hard, culture hard, shift hard, in curling Jake, clubs. Hard. I think a lot of curling clubs are really leaning into their junior programs. I know yeah. here in the at the Eau Claire Curling Club, they really lean into their juniors and really they're okay when they play in the adult leagues. They want them in the adult Stop leagues. They want to play against them. It's a cool thing for them. And so I think that's a, a thing that's been changing over the last number of years, which only helps let our juniors get better earlier which in turn is going to help us as a country be better on a world stage moving forward. So maybe a chance to set up a steal here for Team Lenoy. As Fitzgerald's been trying to clear things up. Ethan McCumber throwing the guard to try to protect that stone. Just letting this die now. Should be just fine. Well done. Like this. Fitzgerald's kind of got to make a decision here if they're going to run okay, this no, red in the red one or if they're trying to make the yellow red over the top. Right. Looks like they're going to run the red in. Okay. Could put yourself into a little bit of danger here if you miss this and give Lenoy a draw to the, to the eight foot to sit two buried between the four yep. foot lines. Yep. Yeah, it looked like that one might have got started a little bit out of the hand of Jackson Askew. Just over curls a little bit and now rolls for a second guard as well. It's a good opportunity for Lenoy to maybe come in with another counter. Just top 12, pro side light. I'm calling top 12, so if you're going to do that, you want to make sure you at least get a piece underneath the two guards that are up. Cumber is lobbing this one down, trying to get tight to top 12. Plenty of room as an ounce. I think they want this just to die. Yeah, you'd obviously love for it to curl and get buried, but if you're not going to get there, leaving it as high as you can, make this double as hard as possible. And they will have a run at the double now with that one sitting top 12. This one flared a little bit. And that's going to be on the wide side and goes right by. So green light for Team Lenoy. Uh, or do you want to be a hair out there? I think you want to be a hair out there. Yep. We can honestly be edge to edge with it. Yeah, it's one okay, of those you? situations where if you're Team Lenoy and you could see into the future and knew you were going to get that, you would have loved to bring that yellow as deep as possible, tried to sit but two. You, just, you were a hair out on the release. So just Obviously, mind, can't see into the future. Mind. Just a two, two, three, well, two. Be on Brody's side of the. So it looks like they're just guarding up this stone in the top of the 12s. Thought they may look at the outturn draw around the outside of those guards, as the one in the top 12s is already serving as a guard for you on that line. If they want to slash that one into two rocks that are buried. You let them do that all day. And now you may see if this guard is made, Team Fitzgerald is the team that tries to play that outturn draw instead. Yeah, we talk a lot on 
on my team, and I'm sure you guys talked a lot on teams you've played on about smart aggression and when to take what the opponent's given you. You don't need to steal two going into this end, but if they give you a chance like that outturn draw where, hey, it's kind of a free one, might be good for us to go after it and see what we can do. I think it's uh, just looking off at the angles that seeing if all three I go, the they're close enough that it might drag a little bit. So like, There's a little separation between it's like them. There? If you're there, you gotta throw peel because we gotta move that one to there. Not even. Alright, that's probably stay. We'll probably stay one here, that's there. That's, that's not the worst. Goes. And then as long as this goes, we just need to open things up. We don't need a deuce here even. We just need. Right? Right there? Yeah. Anywhere from I'm, like, I'm worried that straight jams. Thing. You don't think. I'm, here, no, that's probably over the top and you're at least here. Tough to tell from the cameras. To me, I think you might, I think it looks like though. if you hit it on the nose, nose like of the good. yellow, you're going to jam. But if you hit I it a little high, high really okay. you might be able to get it to flop there, a there, foot there, or so to the right off that right. top yeah. four yellow. That's peel. <laughs> We're certainly going to find out, though. Yeah, it's... It looks like it's it's not going to drag much. If you nose, you might get some action over the top. High side, you definitely will. And I think they're looking for high side. Couldn't quite tell what they decided where they wanted to hit it. I think your ideal spot to hit would be a three quarters high. And then you just deal with the fact that the first rock is going to stay there, but the second two are the ones you want to clear. So here is Fitzgerald's Straight. triple attempt. Straight. At least double attempt. Straight. Picked him up right out of his hand. That does go over the top. Hit that exactly where he needed to. Well thrown, nice shot, Team Fitzgerald. I think right on, yep. Beautifully thrown, well swept, keeping it out there the whole way. And now sitting one in the back of the 12 just foot. Need top eight, top four would be fantastic. And just a hair high, ended up being perfect. So for Lenoy, have to forget that one. And now at the start of the end, if you would have had this opportunity with two guards to go around, you'd probably be pretty happy with that. The chance to get your steal if you make this. Yeah, as long as you make this good, you might force Fitzgerald into a tough draw or freeze. I don't imagine he'd throw the run back for two, being the scoreboard what it is. Yeah, this one really hanging. Looks like it may no, tap no, that red no. in. So that end turns on its head in a hurry with that make by Aiden Fitzgerald, and now a draw for three. That came Thanks. virtually out of nowhere. Even less than that? I don't mind it. I don't mind less. Just goes to show how one shot, one well-made shot, or one half miss can really flip the entire outlook of an end. So final stone of the sixth. Straight. Aiden Fitzgerald with Lines good. draw to full, full 12 foot Lines for good. three. Already sitting two. Okay. Okay. Straight. We're sitting, right? Yeah, yeah. Good throw. Yep, three. That will settle in the back of the eight foot four three. And Fitzgerald now with a commanding 7-1 lead after six ends.
Twin Cities Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. So quite the swing on Skip Stones in the sixth end. Team Fitzgerald looking like they're trying not to give up a steal or one or two. And all of a sudden, an open draw for three after a great run-in double by Aiden Fitzgerald on his first. They lead 7-1 here in the seventh. Jake Ring coming right in the button. The first here in seventh end. And defense mode now for Team Fitzgerald. Only four ends to play with a six point lead. And I think if I had to describe how Team Fitzgerald's been playing so far this game in a word, I'd say comfortable. I don't know what you've seen, but they've just looked on most every shot, comfortable with what the ice is doing, how much it's going to curl, where they need to sweep. Not making any major mistakes I haven't seen yet. Yeah, they've dictated the action for the most part. And you know, when you get that early lead and you're able to keep things fairly open, staying away from difficult shots, trying to make your opponent play the more difficult ones. You get into a good rhythm, and they have been comfortable for the most, the majority of this game. I'd agree with that. just nice. Right down to it. Right to it. Another one coming into the house for Ring. Keep going. Keep going. Hard. 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 That's good, Jake. Two in. The eights and the fours to start things out. So now... Lenoy looking for a second guard. And they're going to need to make something happen. Now your minimum score you're looking for probably is a three. Two, two gets you at least in range to, to keep playing, but at some point you're going to need to score a big end or get a couple steals of multiple points to have a chance. Throwing the out turn to the same side. Now trying to finish to bury. Need to bury this completely. Fitzgerald can take a run at the stone of the house. I think they'll give it a shot. Yeah, it looks like they have at least a quarter of it, which should be plenty. It does move off this center line. They should be good. And if they just tick the guard over a couple of feet, they're not going to be super sad about that. Carter Mitchell, Great. like to play this one tight to the guard. Whoa, 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 As you said, Connor, whoa. if you catch a piece of the guard, that's Hard. just fine. Just don't want to be on the Hard wide it. side. Hard, move it. Hard, it's Hard, gotta you go. Got it, Hard. Looks Hard, like they should Hard. get a piece, I think, Hard. at the end. That's okay, Carter. Pushes that's it to the that's open, it. that's not a bad that, result. Yeah, gives them a chance here, because on their next, I. I would imagine that Fitzgerald's going to be peeling that corner guard. Gives him a chance to maybe get both with the with the out turn, kill two birds with one stone, and even if you miss it, it doesn't cost you anything because you're losing the shooter no matter what by trying it. It's a little up. Second, Brady Weichman trying to get Hard, girl. these reds moving. Maybe roll towards the corner. It just ends up straight jamming there. 
does keep the shooter in play. Now just an elimination game for Fitzgerald. Mitchell second, playing the out turn hit and roll away. Would you ever consider throwing the out turn peel on this one? Yeah, you could. The guard is the most dangerous rock in this end. That's the one that the big end comes from. If you play that, you might sl try to slash it into the, the rock in the side of the 12 foot. I think for Fitzgerald, they're just keeping things as simple as they can. There's a yellow rock we can hit. We're going to hit it. Yeah, that would definitely be an option. Try to get the most out of one particular shot. Because I don't know what you guys called them when you were when you were playing, but we talk a lot on our team about recognizing and eliminating danger rocks. And like you just said, that corner guard is the danger rock for Team Fitzgerald in this end. That one gets so close to the guard, it comes all the way out the other this, side. This, I think I pushed it. Yeah, like I think it was like an inch. I, I, I saw it move. Uh, I feel like our time it's shouldn't be running for this. You can just cap it whichever way you think it that was probably about as much All as right, that's fine. So that stone in the forefoot just kicked a little bit, didn't move it very much. The skips just talking about where it was, how much they need to move it, but third for Fitzgerald now. Jackson Askew hitting the open stone. Whoa. They'd probably yeah, like yeah, to roll yes. all the way in if they can. Hard. Hard. Did they call the roll or the double? No, they were playing the double right out of hand. It does clear one stone. Now that guard's still there. We'll see if Lenoy can use it. Yeah, if they could throw the draw around and kind of Christmas tree with the guard and their rock on the tee line, all of a sudden... Fitzgerald's got a couple of rocks that aren't super easy to hit and remove from the rings. So out turn, come around, draw. I like the call here. They thought about hitting the number one counter, but if you're going to get three or four, you need to use that guard. You can always hit the rock later on. Still have three shots left. Getting one buried now, you put a little more pressure on your opponent. Line looks really good on this hard. one. Hard, hard, get on. That works. Ends up a biter, but only fourth count. Just take that back when I roll under. So just might have died on him a little bit, so maybe a chance to hit and sit three for Fitzgerald. Still not out of the woods yet for Fitzgerald. If they make this roll to the inside under the center guards a little bit. I think you'll see Team Lenoy throw a freeze or a hit and roll on top and they could still build a two or a three even with only three rocks left to throw. Whoa, whoa, push, push, push. Whoa, whoa, roll it, any roll. That's good. You know, a lot of times now with the sweeping to curl, the carving, you hear teams you like board? calling straight, curl, straight, curl. You know, you could just say clean. <laughs> it's going to be right in the middle of the two of them. I cannot <laughs> tell you how many times I've told my team and other teams that I've helped out, like, hey, we got to remember, the rock will curl on its own. If you do nothing, the rock's going to curl. It is always a little straight, funny straight. when you hear that straight curl, straight curl oh, back and curl. forth. Curl. Curl. Shot was made on those, and they are sitting three. This one really curling at the end, trying to get the roll underneath. Still shows a pretty good piece. Now it's just there. Stay, stay three, though. Control. You don't quite have all of it from the hack. 
Cups. So they're saying we're happy with just rolling away, but would like to stay third just to make that two a little bit tougher. It'd be very difficult to make that rock in the top of the 12 foot count if Red has three on. Softweight intern Hard. for Aiden Fitzgerald. Hard. Hard. You gotta go. Hard. Trying to get it to finish to remove this yellow stone. Go, go, See how go, far go, they go. can go Hard. with it. Hard all the way, Hard. Come on. Hard. Boy, and that shows you how live the striking bands are that that rock went that far. <laughs> Touches it over to a, a now freeze. <laughs> That's a skill shot there. Not sure I've seen that before. That I can't remember at any point. A, a ticked rock going all the way across the house and ending up a perfect freeze behind your own stone. Yeah. I feel like I've seen it maybe, maybe once, but not exactly, not exactly something you're ever calling for. Lenoy now stumped as, a ha as to how to get that red out of the rings. Yeah, the hit and roll under the two corners is probably your your only option at this point. You're, you're not going to be able to make that Yellowstone count that's in the back of the 12 or the top of the 12. Yeah, you're hoping to make the hit and roll. You almost could consider trying to leave him a sliver, try to tempt him oh, into the hitting it. Maybe he misses or ticks it and rolls out, and then you can... Hit that back one and hopefully get your two that way to bring that top 12 yellow into play. Matthew Lenoy, out turn, hit and roll attempt, trying to get underneath the corner guard. Yes, 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 yes. Gotta go. Whoa! Really gotta go. Yes. Really gotta go. Really gotta go. This one over curling and is gonna roll to the open. Should be able to see all of that stone and now a hit attempt to sit two and play for a force. I'm still trying to remember at some point in this game, Connor, if Lenoy has thrown a draw. I was just a little full my last one, right? Was his first and the first end a draw? I can't remember. That's the only one that I can think of. I, I don't remember if it was, but I, I can't remember one in a, you can't wire this. the rest of the game. What? You can't wire that. You have to roll, get it here. Yeah. Play the roll then. It's I was, here, here. Play the roll in. I was just about to mention, and I'm glad that they saw it and talked about it. Fitzgerald has to be careful that they don't hit the nose here. If they nose this yellow, you could give Lenoy actually a double to go into the side of your red and end up giving up a three. Yeah, I think the worst spot would be rolling out like a foot so that they have more of the inside. Doesn't look like that's going to be a problem. It's going to roll in a little bit. Yeah, it's, they don't have enough of the inside to make that cross house, I don't think. It, you have to throw it hard to get all the way over there, and it's going to be going probably either straight or backwards getting by the guard close to it. So I don't think they can clear the guard tight enough to make it, and they are just drawing as they agree with that. But yeah, if that rolls out another three inches even, then that cross house might be there to pick the red oh, off and get three. I might be tempted, even from the lefty hack, I might be tempted to try to slide a little wide and pitch this one in because I don't know if one is really going to be enough with three ends to, to go. Final stone of the seventh end. 
Matthew Lenoy. Nothing. He's trying to draw the four foot Nothing. against two. All there. Be Nothing. Good. Hasn't started curling yet. I'm just starting to turn. Sweepers seem to like it. Yes! Yeah! Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> and that's good enough. They do get the single. So they cut the deficit now to 7-2 after seven ends of play. And USA Curling would like to take this moment to thank the curling community for supporting the sport and the national organization, whether it's through your membership, donations, or volunteer hours that help our game grow. Your support makes many of our efforts possible, whether it's the webcast coverage you're enjoying right now, the Our House content platform, certification programs for instructors and officials, or the Athlete Outreach Initiative. On behalf of USA Curling, thank you for all that you do. So a spin around the other sheets in this morning draw. On sheet A, Caden Rose and Zach Brennan now tied at four in the seventh. Caden Hebert leading 4-2 over Ryan Church on sheet B. Nick Senzali with a 5-3 lead on Mason Gensel on sheet C. And our feature matchup on sheet D, Aiden Fitzgerald leading 7-2 over Matthew Lenoy. We are in the eighth end. Tyler George here with Connor Kaufman. And Connor, this end now all business for Team Fitzgerald. Five point lead. Any point right now, any score is a good result for Team Fitzgerald. So you're not looking to put together a big end. You're just trying to make sure you have a simple shot on your last and keep your opponent from stealing. 100%. So I assume that after Jake Ring's pair here, you're gonna see about five peels in a row followed by a draw to hopefully the eight foot for them. As long as they can execute their, their plan in this end. Joey Dobbs with the guard and a draw to the button afterwards. Pretty simple decision for Aiden Fitzgerald to hit that stone as they can't peel the guard. It's not touching the center line so they could move it. But this open stone on the button. They will definitely be hitting and probably roll away a little bit. Lead and Jake yeah. Ring playing that shot. Yeah. And you know, Ty, as we watch Jake Ring's shot come down the ice here, it's just now occurring to me that Jake Ring might have one of the best curling last names outside of Flash. We did mention that in the, the first game we had, too. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Sarah Basiri was my co-commentator for that game, and she came right back with a fantastic dad joke it and said okay. it really has a nice oh, ring to it, <laughs> which made me laugh really hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good there. That was fun having her in here. Worked with Sarah in uh, junior camp prior to this, and you know, one of the bunch of juniors that I work with that are in this field previous events and that's the joy of doing these things too is seeing how far Where they've progressed and now playing in competitive events Lines like okay. these with so much farther to go for okay. those that are at her age and around Inside. that age. Hard for weight. 
Hard for weight. Oh, actually, it's going to finish too hard. Sit. Out turn. Sit. Sit. Come around, draw, ends good. up staggering for a guard. Hard. That's a good spot. Yeah. And now, like we talked about, we're going to see probably four peels in a row, four or five from Team Fitzgerald. Yep. Hard, hard. Yep. Hard, you got it Carter Mitchell hard, trying hard, to clear up hard, as much as he hard, can in the front. Hard. Would love to make the double peel. That's, fine. That's okay, Carter. Does move the second one off the center, That's too. That's bad. a good result. That's about a half inch away from maybe getting all three of those yellow moving, too. Process of elimination again. Just even making single peels all the way through. One double peel will open things up so that you probably will have a simple shot on your last. And obviously as Team Fitzgerald here, you're, you'd love to score any amount of points, but with the scoreboard the way it is and with three ends to play, if you do end up having to give up one, you're not going to be heartbroken over it. Real good. Hey, good spot again. Shot. Just this again. Right on the center line. Okay. Peel again. This will be another attempt at the double peel and maybe a run in for Carter Mitchell. Oh. It's just Whoa. an eyelash off on his first. Maybe a little flare on Get the second the one. Yep, That's fine. Oh, you're fine. You're over top. So it just loses the top one. But Lenoy maybe with an opportunity to Get a steal with the setup they have. Going to replace the guard for now. And if you're Lenoy, Connor, you'd like to throw maybe two more guards and then come in as if that center guard is still there, if there is no double peel made, and maybe get a chance to steal it too. Yeah, as long as you can keep these rocks separated enough to where the double peel continues to be hard and they just keep making singles, you should have a good opportunity to put two rocks in the rings. I'd be curious, once we get to that point, if they're going to elect to throw the draw, if they're going to play the in off, the hit and roll off the red. Obviously, you'd rather throw the draw. It's a lot easier to make. But if you don't throw the hit and roll, I can almost guarantee that Fitzgerald's going to be the one that comes in off their own red. It's fine. It's good. Good throw. Yeah, this one getting a little tight and maybe a chance to clear both of those again. That trip was wired. Yeah. You can get all three. Yeah, it's there. Peel it firm. Yeah, two thirds, maybe a little less than that to get that over the top. And if you make the double peel, you probably get the third one in the house, too. So another crack at the triple here. Jackson Askew throwing the outturn side. Oh. Close, oh. Close, oh. Got to be careful about where this red's yellow is going to go. Hard. Ends up losing that other corner yeah, and pushes it through. So Maybe a little don't know if that draw path was going to be needed so. or not, but never a bad thing to have another rock out of play in that situation for Fitzgerald. So another guard for now. And the decision will be the next shot for Team Lenoy if they don't make the double peel. Do you throw one more and dare Fitzgerald to play the draw? Or do you come in and then you give them two cracks at playing the hit? That is always the, the game of cat and mouse that you play when you're in these kinds of situations. It's good, real good. Real good, Ethan. Uh, you can ignore that guard now, though, because that's only covering the corner of that stone. So the center one is the dangerous one. So Fitzgerald correctly Bird, playing yeah, that Bird, one instead. Yeah. Let's get this one. Three quarters should be pretty close here. Maybe a little more. Yeah, when the rocks are this close to nose on nose, it's always a little scary trying to throw the double because if you just miss it by a hair, Oftentimes, you end up leaving your shooter sticking around. Won't be a problem on that shot. Yeah, a little flare there on the release. It does peel, though. So that rock open. 
So a little less dangerous situation now for Fitzgerald with that center guard being gone and the, the other guard really not covering the stone. It's very unlikely you give up a steal of two in this situation. A hair loss, actually. So one more guard, I believe, for Lenoy. And with only the one yellow in the rings, I think it makes Fitzgerald's decision on whether to draw or hit a lot simpler. I think he's going to be a lot more comfortable just throwing the peel. Four, three, four, three, two, three, coming down. Curlin, where? So trying to decide if they want to finish this to get on the paint or leave it. But that's a good spot. I think it's this just a straight peel now. There is this. But it's like back four weight probably. This is one you might want to talk about and think about the scoreboard. Can you really get to there? And That's I think you you're right, Ty, that you don't necessarily need to throw the run back. If you throw the straight peel, I think the best Lenoy can do is either throw this same guard and then you're drawing, worst case, you're giving up a steal of one. Or they try to come in and try to go top eight, top four area and Christmas tree a little bit, and you should have contact for either a double or at least to get one. Yeah, just getting rid of that center guard is all you need to do here. They're looking at playing this high. This is the way you give up more than one. You'll be playing the high stone. So now electing just to play the center one. This is the correct call. But you don't need to get real aggressive at the run, as you said, Connor. If that rock's gone, you should have a pretty simple shot to give up one at worst. And then you're still up four with the hammer in the ninth end. So you got to think about, you know, don't just get in well, let's not give up the steal mode. Look at the scoreboard. Look at where you're at. Think of, are you okay with giving up a steal of one in this situation yeah. by playing it safe and making sure you don't give up more than one? So here at Firm, the call, I think they're really going fairly aggressive at the run. You really need that shooter to be off if you don't make the double. Push. Push. Whoa. Whoa, just roll it away. Roll it away. Roll it away. And that's just fine. That's exactly all you need to do. Yep. So now for Lenoy, I think your your best bet is to try to Christmas tree this line, come around that guard, but show half. That's your only chance really at a two. And down by five, you're gonna have to do that at some point. So even though you have a better chance of stealing one by throwing the guard, that's not gonna be enough points by the end of this game. So I think they did call for the guard. Lenoy's last stone here of the eighth. Sweepers think he's a little heavy, which could be Honestly, benefit. Oh no, there. Yeah, this is over curling right now too. Needs to stop. So there's a little piece of that yellow showing. It's Not a quite. bit of a teaser. Back line. You don't have to push it real far. What? You don't have to push it very far. As yeah, like long as you score, like the game is like probably over. So don't worry okay, about either sticking around or clearing that great. stone, whichever it is. Play enough weight that if you make contact, it's going out. That's all you need to worry about. Yeah, what weight would you like for this shot, Connor, with this score the way it is? Paramore. If I could see more of it, Perfect. I might be throwing something more like normal. It looks like he only he's only got about a quarter. I'm probably throwing board, I'd say, with how much he can see. Like you said, you want to make sure that even if you get just a sliver of it, 
that rock's going, but obviously the more weight you throw, the less it's going to curl, the more precise you have to throw it, so. Yeah, a little positive release, but the weight's soft enough, it is curling. Line looks really good now. And that's, that's why I, really well done by Aiden. Great shot. And that's why I like that soft weight. You bring your sweepers into it and make a really nice shot there. That's good enough for two and the win for Aiden Fitzgerald. 9-2 victory. Great shot to finish that game off. And Connor, solid performance from Team Fitzgerald. Didn't overextend, didn't try to push the pace or the pressure or anything like that with the, the house being relatively open for most of the game. Just made simple shots executed enough to win the game, so they played a smart game. That's exactly what I was going to say. It was just smart all the way through. Good decision-making, didn't try to do too much, took what the opponent gave them, and it showed on the scoreboard. So good win for Fitzgerald to get their second win of the week. Lenoy now drops to 1-3. and three. We will be back here for the 2 p.m. Central women's draw. So for Tyler George... Connor Kaufman and the Curling Stadium crew. Thanks for watching. We will see you at 2.